let's move on to the last item. This one, uh, we covered most of the topics, so it's going to be a combination of them and a review. You have some dense features, you have some sparse features, you have some embedding lookup layer, some MLPs, these are your neural networks, you have factorization machine, another neural network on top, and then you're going to do your prediction. Let's just start with embeddings. For embeddings, you usually have one-hot vectors or multiple one-hot vectors concatenated with each other. These are your sparse features. You have an embedding matrix that you're going to take that one-hot vector and multiply by your embedding matrix to pick up a row of that matrix. Or you can have, you can do some feature engineering. If you have a one-hot vector for gender, you have another one-hot vector for occupation. You can uh, introduce another one-hot vector, which could model a male doctor, a female doctor, or we can play around with the combinations of all of them. So you're increasing the damage. By the end of the day, you have a sparse features that you're going to embed in a continuous space by multiplying by your embedding matrix. And then if you're operating across batches, this is capital A, this is small a, you have multiple of them that you're concatenating and processing at the same time. This is your embedding layer. Perfect. A quick recap of matrix factorization. We are, we are not going to do matrix factorization here. We are going to be doing factorization machines, which is going to generalize matrix factorization. But a quick recap, this is going to help you look at matrix factorization from a new perspective. You have a set of users and items that have been interacting with each other. Perhaps the user is rating a movie out of five stars. For each product, you're going to have a vector. This is similar to embedding. For each user, you have a vector. These are learnable parameters or learnable parameter vectors. You have your data that this user interacted with this particular product. And then we saw this when we were covering neural matrix factorization. What you're doing here is multiplying the user vector and the item vector. And then you're trying to predict the rating that user J gave to the ith product. But let's reformulate this. We have this interaction matrix of users and items. Let's put all of the items in a W matrix, put all of the user vectors in a V matrix. And all you're doing is trying to match the R vector to the multiplication of these two. So you can think of this as dimensionality reduction. You have a lot of items, you have a lot of users, but you re you're reducing the dimension to D. It's a hyperparameter that you choose. And that's going to give you this last function here. You want R to match uh, WV transports. This is for two features, which is you have item and the user. Or you can say that a user with this particular occupation from this uh, country using this type of a web browser interacted with this item. So now you have more features to work with rather than two. In those cases, you're going to do factorization machine. What is that? You have your input data. You have your target labels. That, yes, this user clicked on that item. And this is your click-through rate, whether the user clicked or didn't click on an item. And then this formula, you're going to remember. There is the bias plus the linear portion of the model plus the nonlinear portion, which is taking into account the interactions between pairs of variables. And if you remember last time, I was mentioning that if you put everything in a matrix, you're looking at the upper diagonal part because this is going to end up being a symmetric matrix. So you can say xi times vi times vj times xj, and then you're doing a summation over all of the i's and over the j's that are bigger than i. This is what we were doing with factorization machine. This is this layer here, and you have two MLPs, one before the factorization machine, one after the factorization machine. And these are usual matrix vector multiplications. As soon as you have vectors to work with, after your embedding layer, then you can push them through MLPs. So far, so good. How are you going to implement this? It turns out that whenever you have embedding matrices, 
And in the case that you have a lot of features to work with, these are high dimensional, your embedding matrix is gonna end up being high dimensional. It means that each time that you're looking up a data point in your embedding matrix, you are accessing the memory. So the embedding layer is gonna be memory bound. You're gonna be bound by the speed that you can read off from the memory. And whenever something is memory bound, you're gonna do model parallelism. You're gonna break up your model into pieces and each GPU is gonna look at different portions of your model. The neural networks in general are compute bound. They're gonna use a lot of computation, matrix vector multiplication. And whenever that is the case, you're gonna do data parallelism. You're gonna break your data across the batch dimension. Each GPU is gonna look at a different portion of your data. This is the data that I want you to explore. And this is how we are gonna do the model parallelism. Each number that you see here, in addition to the corresponding color, is a data point. And if you do model parallelism, each device is gonna look at only number ones. These are the parameters corresponding to perhaps the first few dimensions of your embedding matrix. Then the next device is gonna look at the next few uh, parameters in your embedding table, etc. This is the first part of your model. You do model parallelism. Now each GPU is gonna work with a portion of the W matrix. Then you're gonna do some handshake here from model parallelism to data parallelism. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take all of the blue ones. This is basically your vectors. And then you're gonna push them or concatenate them uh, together on top of your different devices across the batch. So this is your batch dimension. All of the blue ones, one, two, three, they're gonna go here. All of the green ones are gonna go here. And the batch dimension, which was one, 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 the color ones, you're gonna put them one, one, and one here. That's your batch dimension. The batch dimension with model parallelism is over there. And once you do data parallelism, things are gonna be fast afterwards. We can look at the accuracy for DLRM. And then this is conveying the same message that your model is gonna be memory bound. So most of the operations on a GPU or a CPU, this is CPU, this is GPU, is going into reading off from the memory. So it's a good idea to do model parallelism and then data parallelism for the MLP part. I think I'm gonna stop here. For those of who have questions, I'll be around.